Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I need to do the difficult thing and rise in opposition to these nominees. Um, I had the good fortune of serving on the Judiciary Committee and actually being able to support all of these nominees through the Judicial Committee process. Um, my comments today do not, like the other, I think my other Republican colleagues, does not go toward any specific qualification for these individuals. It's actually, you know, emotionally, from a compassionate standpoint, a very difficult vote to make. Because these individuals, when they're nominated, sort of put their life on hold. They have to, if they're practicing in private practice, have to put their files aside and start preparing for the transition. So I really don't take this vote lightly by any means. But what has compelled me is being very familiar with our budget process and hearing from our judicial branch and trying to reconcile where we are. I need to go through mental gymnastics in order to be able to financially justify this vote today. And because I believe that we are in such a dire financial situation, billions of dollars of deficits in the out years, I want to be careful before I take a vote to add any new position in state government. You know, we've heard today that justice is slow and therefore we need to add these positions. But I haven't heard that through the judiciary process. And all the public hearings that we have heard on a myriad of bills dealing with every different aspect of our courts, I've not heard this session that we have had a massive backlog that we need to address. To the contrary, I've heard pieces of legislation of how to make our courts more efficient, how to streamline our process to make it so that we could save, actually save money. When our chief court administrator was asked, could we afford these 30 positions, the initial response was, I think I could absorb 11, and now with retirements, maybe 17. But the governor went ahead and appointed 30. And part of me, frankly, I get a bit angry because it's sort of that behavior is wh why we are where we are today. The governor has sole authority to make appointments to the judiciary. He also has the ability to put bond projects on the bond commission agenda. And lo and behold, we're over a bond cap. Um, we could blame the governor on that, but ultimately we do have members that sit on that committee. And at what point do we say enough is enough? And so unfortunately, that's why I am standing here today. And I just, I need to respond to the comments about if we add judges, we're gonna be more efficient in our courtrooms. What we all need to understand in this chamber is when we add a judge, we can't just add that position. We need to add the support staff that go along with it. Because when a judge is presiding in a room, they need a clerk and they need a court monitor. And so my understanding is that that total for these judges would amount to about $12.5 million that the state of Connecticut needs to find. Um, and I, I guess the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, I think, is correct that it may net out to about $5 million with the retirements. But the reality is also, when judges retire, they're able to... Uh, take senior status, and so they're paid on a per diem basis, which arguably is a more efficient way to operate our courtrooms because they don't get paid all the fringe, which costs us 86%. The fringe alone um, is about 86% of a judge's salary. Those things go away for the senior uh, trial referees. So there are other options if we're really looking for efficiencies to make cases run better, which I don't think we are, but if we really were, there's other alternatives. I think we also need to factor in that our caseload, my understanding, has decreased by about 20%. When I look at these things from a fiscal standpoint, there are other priorities in the state of Connecticut that we need to make. And finally, I think, and, and I, I would hope I could, we would hear from our appropriations committee, but it was my understanding that Judge Carroll had asked for about $4 million to cover support personnel that they need in the courtrooms in order to handle the current level of judges that we have. And I think it points to what Representative O'Day alluded to, 
where judges are waiting to be able to convene their courtroom because the support staff aren't there. And yet we are not doing that in this process today. Currently today, there's about a $4 million hole for support staff that needs to be filled. And then finally, we haven't even calculated the impact that CBAC is going to have on this appointment and the other appointments. My understanding is it's $7.9 million it is going to cost the judiciary branch in order to pay these additional judges with the $2,000 uh, annual stipend that's built into the CBAC agreement. So I will just say and conclude, and I appreciate the uh, speaker giving me this indulgence, I, I would just conclude that it is a shame that I have to put my, my, push my red button. And I think it's a shame for many of us that are pushing our red button. It does not reflect on the qualifications of these individuals. But what it does reflect is a need to recognize where we are as a state to stop looking at things in a vacuum, to stop looking at things with our blinders on, and to start looking at holistically the impact that one decision has on, the, on another. And certainly, this, these votes today are going to have a significant impact on our budget to the tune of upward of $20 million. And I, for one, can think of many other ways to spend that money. Thank you, Mr.